it's the next level. You have to do it now. Only if you're by my side. Wait a sec. Have you ever even seen a game show? No, but there's a first time for everything. <laughs> what? I don't know. You're being delightful. I must owe someone a muffin basket for this personality shift. Maybe... Maybe you make me happy. <sighs> well, this is shaping up to be a night to remember. Hey panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about the third episode of Marvel's What If. And that's entitled, What If Doctor Strange Lost His Heart Instead of His Hands? So Steve, take us off with that synopsis that we got. <laughs> synopsis is so ridiculous. What if Doctor Strange lost his heart and not his hands? That's really what it was? That's, that's that's the synopsis. Yeah, that's exactly what, what I pulled out of IMDb. I didn't look for any other synopsis. I was just like, well, okay. <laughs> They're just going to restate the title. I guess that's what we're going to do. Well, it could have been he lost his mind, too. Yeah, it could have been. could have been. <laughs> but uh, with that, we'll move right along right into our initial thoughts of the movie. Or show, as it were. Yeah. Uh, what were your thoughts? I mean, you know... <laughs> really dark and depressing first off uh, you know yeah. I, I watched it <laughs> three times I, is what i ended up watching it just to get the full the, the full impact of it because man it was like i don't want to say it's my favorite one because we're only halfway we're not quite halfway through the series but man it was really good and mm. seeing you know seeing dr strange in this kind of way like we've never seen this kind of dr strange before no no we have not and my thoughts, well, I thought it was a sad story and a strange story. <laughs> not to coin a phrase, <laughs> but or not to make fun of it. But I really felt the heartache within Strange when he lost Christine over and over again. To me, that was like so devastating. We never really saw that kind of side of Strange himself. And it was a big twist uh, in the event of what made Stephen Strange into Doctor Strange in that particular universe. Instead of going to the award ceremony alone, he brought Christine at every time within this particular universe. So, which made this so very much different from what we got in the movie. Plus the fact that we, uh, that the Ancient One had split the timeline within its own universe and made it worse, I think. The duality within it was amazing. You can see all Stephen Strange's uh, and his persi persistence and, and to achieve the knowledge like the original movie within this particular episode. I really found that fascinating. I really thought it was well done. You know, uh, plus we have Uwatu, uh, the Watcher himself, somewhat interfering within the episode with not really interfering. Mm -hmm. You know, he gives a little uh, presence and speaks to Strange directly, which is something that House Podcast actually mentioned because they were anticipating that, and now we got something like that. But I don't think uh, The Watcher actually purposely did something. So, But it, it was something that they stated would not happen in the beginning of the show, but now we got something where The Watcher was overlooming even more so within this particular universe, mm -hmm. and I thought that was very fascinating. Yep. Yeah. So with that, we'll move right into our top fives. Christine. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Steven? What did you do? No, 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 no. I believe it's your turn to go first. Sure. Uh, my number five. Well, the different versions of deaths 
within the beginning of the episode. All of them are with Christine. But there is one moment when Stephen is being driven by Christine. But he lives and she still dies, nonetheless. And what the Ancient One didn't state outrightly is that Stephen's fate within that universe to seek out the mystical arts. You know, that he, he still, you know, seek them out, but for different reasons in comparison to the other universe that we know. And that, uh, she, you know, of course that Christine had to die for that particular universe. I really felt Strange lost his love and would do anything to get her back. And you really feel it within every time she dies. And it's just somebody who's so heartbroken. Whereas within the movie itself, it's all about his hands and recovery and determination. But he always still had Christine in that particular universe. Mm -hmm. Even though they were separated. Or he kind of distanced himself. But he still had a fondness and love for her. Very different. And I, I find that very intriguing. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It was really that relationship. I think I've got some of it in my discussion points as well to, to, to talk about with the, with that whole thing. But I, because I hadn't watched the movie in quite a while, so I couldn't remember if she was initially with him in the car or not. And so it was it was good to finally get that confirmation that no, in our in our universe yeah. or the M, M unit, the Marvel universe, she wasn't uh, with him in the movie. So so it made a total different dynamic with him going to learn you know mm -hmm. the the uh dark the the sorcery and stuff it was a total different reason and he he got to launch into it more quickly because his hands weren't shaking or trembling so mm -hmm. yeah so really really good my first one is is just this this whole idea of the absolute point in time that the ancient one talks about <laughs> it and uh, yeah. i had to look it up because i couldn't remember what doctor who had called him but doctor who called him fixed points in time um yeah and yeah and they so were. It was kind of interesting and cool to see that that we have these moments here in in these realities that that are um, that, that can't be changed, and so it was really cool to see that even in a multiverse where you can have things get changed and new branches uh, be created, it was it was really cool to see that even in those multiverses there is going to be these these absolute points these these fixed points that can't be changed and mm -hmm. this it was only for this universe that christine had to die but so exactly. so there, there could be different you know fixed points in time so it was really cool and that, all that quick montage at the beginning i really loved that we saw all the stuff that happened in in the movie we saw how it compared to what happened how they how the events played out in this in this reality, this kind of the same way, and even the way like he ended up defeating Dormammu was kind of the same way in in this reality. Uh, yeah, so that was just my the absolute point in time. I thought was was interesting, and I wonder how long it took the writers to figure that one out. We can't use fixed point in time, so what are we gonna do? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the ancient one actually mentioned that at a at a certain point. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I just I'm wondering in the writers' room who came up with absolute point. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, who's, here. Who, who, you know, who's the person that brought it up? Going, yeah, hold on, we're we're <laughs> trembling on Doctor Who right now. Right. Oh, there's so many people with time travel. Yeah, we can't do that. Yeah, uh, I do agree with that. That, but that's pretty cool, though. You know, it'd be funny. It's like, hey, and they raise their hand. I did it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My number four. Well, that would be the Eye of Agamotto being used so much for uh, Strange to achieve all the power we he needed to bring Christine back to him at certain points. With great power comes great responsibility. So I don't want to keep coining a phrase, but I think that will be brought up mm -hmm. in Spider-Man No Way Home at a certain point. Uh, within this, we, we never see Strange achieve that thought till the end when he truly loses Christine and the universe. The Ancient One kept telling him that over time but he never listened and uh, i think a lot of people called the particular evil side of strange at that point the supreme strange yes that's what the closed captioning showed it it, it said uh strange supreme not supreme mm. strange it was strange supreme or something it was a weird it was weirdly worded in the in yeah the it was captioning. yeah i i had my closed captions on too as well but i found it very odd meaning that i'm i'm hoping that we get to see this version of him 
because the way they ended it, and we'll get into it later, is very ominous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your number four? My number four is just, again, the the animation in this thing was just amazing. And and it was, like I said, I I watched it three times. And for me, there were like three standout moments where the the animation for me was just just incredible. And it was, uh, as he's experiencing each of Christine's deaths... His mm. hair gets a little bit more disheveled. Yep. You, you can see it. His face looks more haggard each time. And even Benedict Cumberbatch, in his voice acting, he portrays the the growing frustration that that he was he was getting each time she would die. You know, and in that final moment when the Ancient One finally comes to him and tells him about this absolute point, you can hear the anguish in his voice. It was just so so incredible. Um, and then when he first meets o- Obing, is that how you say his name? Obing. Um, Obain, Obing, o- o- I don't Bing, know. Uh, anyway, the way the way the animation had the light kind of coming through his hat, yeah, was really just super cool, and I loved it. And then uh, at the end, when uh, again I did put it in my notes, it was Strange Supreme. As he's emerging and he's walking toward Doctor Strange, the shadows behind him kind of twist and change into all the different creatures that he's mm. absorbed. And I just those those background touches in the animation are are just really, really incredible. I thought this... They're impeccable. Yeah. 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 My number three, that would be uh, Strange's obsession to borrow the powers of the beings to gain the power to alter time to his own whim. Mm -hmm. He learns to obtain that power from mystic beings. He he pretty much asks them at the very beginning, and then he gets shut down, and then he learns how to, you know, take them from them. But so filled with power mm-hmm. that he looks like a demon himself in the end when he, he he tries to save Christine at that very last moment. But that was only for a moment because the the universe was basically falling apart due to his own selfish needs. Yeah. And it, it's such a sad and tragic story. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if he learned from it while being enclosed in that prism because i think he's still stuck in that universe where it kind of blipped out Mm -hmm. where there is no universe but he's stuck in that prism yeah that's gonna be interesting to see if that comes up again or not i don't know yeah i I would love to see that i wonder if strange gets to see that either in the multiverse of madness or in no way home Mm -hmm. because these are before these particular movies right and it'd be interesting to see uh cumber patch actually play that particular character Hmm. and go against himself yeah very much like we saw with vision on vision and Mm -hmm. wandavision yeah um so my next one is is we already you talked a little bit about it you're just is is the watcher you ought to uh getting closer and closer than ever before really and we see like it's it's cool like i said on, on three watches that you see there's a moment at the very beginning where Strange kind of looks over his shoulder and he kind of feels his presence, but you don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, And then at one point, you know, he gives us this commentary in the middle of the episode where he's just talking about, about what's happening to Dr. Strange. And then, like you said, there at the end or towards the end, he actually interacts with, with Strange. And just the look of the watcher was really cool. I know House Podcastic kind of looked at the, the, the drawings of him in the eighties comic book or kind of, with the big head and they're kind of they kind, kind of, of referenced that too within the avengers too mm-hmm. yeah or we saw them, right? or guardians of the galaxy when they Which, kind of whiz past rocket mm-hmm. and uh rooker's character they f- flip by yeah. and then stanley's giving that and you see three watchers there with the huge mm-hmm. heads yeah yeah but i i liked it because it to me it didn't appear creepy it really was it really was good it wasn't weird uh, no. So I, I hope we really get to see some more, or we get to see an actual episode where he does interfere, because we know in the comics he occasionally would would actually you know push a character one way or kind of give him some information uh, to help him out and stuff. So I, I'd love to see that in this this show. Well, especially within the Fantastic Four too, because Reed Richards actually interacts with the Watcher a lot. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious with this whole multiverse that's going on when they do it actually introduce the Fantastic Four into the MCU that they actually have the Council of Reeds mm-hmm. at a certain point because there's going to be a bunch of different Reed Richards from different multiverses. And a lot of them actually do have at one point. And I'm referencing the Secret Wars from, I'm going to say about five, uh, between five and seven years ago. They had a Council of Reeds and... Three of them had the Infinity Stones 
and the Infinity Gauntlet on their hands, hmm. which is interesting. So I'm wondering if the Illuminati is going to be eventually introduced into the MCU as well. I know it's a lot to take and take in, but this is a multiverse. So, And I've already speculated about Secret Wars and that version of Secret Wars playing out to being the penultimate thing that we get at the end, which would be amazing too. And I'm hoping that we do get a Spider-Man in a black costume. <laughs> And I digress. Yes. So we'll move you're, right you're... into uh, my my number two, which would be the moment that the Ancient One approaches the Good Strange mm -hmm. within the universe, telling that telling him that basically she split the timeline within that particular universe. Something that we know from Endgame is that she is completely against any splitting of timelines ever. You know, she basically lectured Banner about it and pushed him out of his body, of the Hulk body, and all you saw is the apparition of uh, Banner himself, Mark Ruffalo. And uh, basically her meddling, I think, made it worse or just made it factual that it was something that should not have not have happened, at least, because apparently she created more going on within this particular universe. It, it, you know, we know from Back to the Future, a paradox is a bad thing, and she blatantly points it out, but I think she kind of created that particular paradox. Interesting. But that's, yeah, yeah. that's my thought. I don't know. It's, 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 this was my number two as well, was kind of this this whole, the ancient one when she mm -hmm. goes. And, and it, it took me a, a, a couple times to try to figure it out in my head. So she's, when she's alive when he has the car crash. And, mm -hmm. and that's where he travels back in time and she spends... She he travels back in time from a time where she's not alive to a time where she is alive, and mm -hmm. that's when she splits him. And she says that he traveled back in time to visit Cogliostro's library, and that's what o Obing also says when he dies. He says it's been centuries that that Strange has been there. So I can only assume that the, when she split him, one of the reasons why she had to split him in that within the same timeline was because she had to have a Doctor Strange in the in her present. To do all the things that he was going to do, you know what I'm saying? Like, she, yeah. he when he when he went back in time from two years from the two year anniversary, right? And so that's why we see that at the end, like you said, when she when when at the end when he says, "Oh, I will join you," and that's the other strange at the at the two year anniversary. It's 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 all timey wimey. It's just so. Uh, Timey, wimey, <laughs> wibbly, wobbly, going on. Yeah, it's typical Doctor Who. But it was it was great when I put it all together in my head. I I can't really voice it. I'm not verbally expressing it correctly. But when I mm. put it all together in my head, it really it really was really fascinating story wise what they did because like I said, she had to split that timeline because when he went back in time, she had to split him in half because when he went back in time, like I said, I, I'm repeating myself now. She she needed a Doctor Strange to do all the things that he was going to do in those two years. So, yes. So that was my number two. All right. Yeah. Uh, and to add to uh, everybody's confusion, um, the same paradox kind of thing happened to, if you watch The Time Machine, from, I'm going to say 2002 with Guy Pierce, He did the same thing to prevent his uh, his girlfriend, fiance, or whatever it was, from dying every time. He could never finish it and fix it. And then that's when he forced himself to go into the future. Mm. Because he couldn't get to her every time she died. Right. And it's such an interesting concept and thought. But if you're into that whole time travel thing, there are movies like The Time Machine, even the original one, from what was it, the '60s? Uh, I love, and you got uh, time after time with Christopher Reeve, and there's a whole bunch of them. My, I highly recommend Wilhelm when they talk about time travel because it's amazing, and they they go into the different ideas and timelines and time, you know, and how time works, the paradox, and changing time, and I think it's it's really really cool. So check out Wilhelm. Uh, check out the uh, 2002 uh, Guy Pierce movie, The Time Machine, and it's got. I think it's pretty good. Uh, I love that one as well as the original 1960s version. But uh, if you you got really intrigued with this particular episode about time and how it works, that's one movie. Always, you know, Marvel. Always, <laughs> they did it in Endgame. They referenced Back to the Future. 
and how bad it was. And it's like using Back to the Future as a reference point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I kind of digressed again. <laughs> That's but, okay. Uh, I'll move right along into my number one, which is the meeting of the two Doctor Stranges. So we got Strange Supreme, as a, you know, as everybody's been calling him and what was put in subtitles. And I call the good one <laughs> who tries to convince the, you know, Strange Supreme. The battle was crazy between both of them. And Supreme uses the dark magics to combine themselves together. But the Eye of Agamotto, come on, that was put into play as well. Mm -hmm. He becomes something more dangerous with what he destroys, you know, and destroys the universe. And the Watcher tries to explain it to him at the very end. And I thought that was pretty cool for the fact that we got the Watcher intervening, like I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. And then Supreme Strange looks demonic to Christine because, just like you had mentioned before... He had all those apparitions, but he had multiple eyes, a whole bunch of things. He looked kind of demonic at yeah. certain points. Yeah. Then, basically, the end result, he erases all of reality from that particular universe. And I thought, wow, we see the destruction of a universe in this mm -hmm. What If series. And it's pretty much almost like what we learned from Loki at a certain point, too. Because they were pruning people. Before certain events happen within those particular universes, if you think about it. Yeah, I still and, don't understand that whole thing. I've got to watch it again. But... And I think they prune themselves at this, this given point, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you could say that, I think. Um, this it, it was totally a shocker to me. That was my – this was my number one, this fight between – and I love when Wong – when he explains it to Wong and Wong kind of says it back to him and he, go, he goes, let's be honest. We've been through Stranger, or, or we've been, yeah, we've been through Weirder, I think is actually what he said, not Stranger. He says Weirder. Um, yeah. So, and again, the animation and the, the voice acting of, of Benedict Cumberbatch is so incredible for him to play those two parts. And yes. there was just enough difference in the voices that you could, you could hear, you could tell it the was The difference. So mm-hmm. And yeah. it was, it was so great. And I love that moment when he says, when they're, he's talking about uh, giving in and uh, the, the good strange says, no, your marbles are long gone. <laughs> so, oh, wow. You know, he gets those little, little, little slipes in there. Um, <laughs> but I love, yeah, it was action packed at, at one point, you know, the cloaks fought at one point, the two different cloaks they had. And, oh yeah. And, and then it, it sacrifices itself for Dr. Strange. Uh, I loved strange Supreme pretending to be Christine and Dr. Strange figuring, basically, basically figuring it out that no, you're not, you're not Christine. Um, but it was, it was a total shocker. It was a total surprise when, when he won, when the, the I mean, we, we should have known that strange Supreme was going to win. Cause he's obviously much more powerful than, than Dr. Strange was, but still it was a shocker and it was a surprise. And I didn't see the universe coming to an end. I was like that. It, I'm with you there. That's like super yeah. dark. And it I'm is just super like, dark. Wow. I can't believe Disney Marvel went there, you know, yeah. with, with this, this show. So it was really, really incredible. Well, some stories can't be happy, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In this case, it, it didn't. Yeah. With that, we should move along right into notes. Yeah, um, let's see. I've got a few here. Do you just want to kind of go back and forth? Because I think some of mine have already been talked about, but I've got some different. Okay. Um, I, I loved that. I kind of already talked about this, but, you know, he, he lost his heart instead of his hands, um, but he followed the same path. But like you said, with different intentions, you know, in the movie, yeah. when he goes when he goes to to search out this sorcery stuff, he's wanting to fix his hands. And in this, in this show, he wants to bring back Christine. Basically he's trying to learn sorcery. So I thought that was really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I highly agree with it. It's, it's complete opposite of the character and, but still has the same vanity that, uh, strange has about himself. Mm -hmm. You know, in this case, it was more for love instead of love for himself and what he prides himself on. Which is very interesting. Yeah. yeah. First note for me would be the Watcher doesn't state this is the moment it happens in this episode, just like you said stated before. So right. we've never got that again. Yeah, we haven't gotten that yet. So it's interesting. We'll see if the next episode picks it up. Picks it up again, or if they just kind of drop that whole idea. 
We talked about the deaths of Christine, but we didn't talk about some of the specific deaths. I loved how there was one where uh, she went to, to where they went to get the pizza at the pizza parlor, you know, but yeah. she still dies. There's one where he stood her up completely and didn't even pick her up, and she still dies. So in I, a I, building I, explosion or yeah, something, yeah, yeah. So I thought that was really really cool. Yeah, that it's like it was fate. It was like she was fated it to actually die mm -hmm. within this particular universe no it's matter absolute, what it's an absolute point mark you can't yep you can't yeah. change an absolute point <laughs> yeah <laughs> i already mentioned it uh the fact that we get uh the watcher intervene in some way he does and he doesn't by explaining to strange that strange will destroy the universe you know if he doesn't stop but you know it, it was just him pointing out the obvious i think mm -hmm. Um, and we've already talked about uh, one, the, the next one, so I'm just going to go on to my last one, which is uh, we saw that tentacled creature again. The yeah. Obing calls it a mystic, a mystic being. Um, mm -hmm. It looked like the same, the same creature that Red Skull uh, had tried to bring into the world. Exactly. So yeah. I, I think that's going to be a running. I think that creature is going to be a running thing throughout the. the Might episodes. be a running gag. Yeah, or, or maybe <laughs> it's going to be a. a something they're going to have to defeat at some point or fight or something yeah and it might come into the multiverse of madness for all we know mm, it could as trippy hippie as it would be mm -hmm. unlike the original 70s version of strange that came out uh, if you ever watched that particular uh introduction it was like a two-hour movie for i think abc at the time and they did a Doctor Strange movie in the 70s. And it's hmm. interesting to, you know, just a little suggestion out there. If you guys could find it, you could probably find it on YouTube. It's funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's got so many 70s theme, themes in it. And I think he has more gold on him than Mr. T. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, next one up for me would be Obane Kong Strange Armani within the episode. And I just loved it <laughs> for the fact that he, he goes, oh, I'm wearing Armani. Oh, you're Armani. <laughs> and he just keeps calling, yeah. keeps calling him that. <laughs> uh, that's all my notes. So you can go on. With all right. Those. Yeah. Well, the next up would be the books that Obane protects are dark texts that were seen within the first Doctor Strange movie. Strange himself became his own villain, if you think about it. Uh, I'm forgetting the name of the character and please Listeners, don't hold me to it. I'm forgetting the name of the antagonist in the particular Doctor Strange movie. I think it's Margo Morden or something. Uh, he was the one that was using or utilizing those dark texts in books mm -hmm. or trying to achieve them. Yeah. And that is where Strange or Strange Supreme went. So we don't get that particular character in here. And where is that character? Is that character within that universe or did he get consumed just like everybody else when the universe collapsed? So are all we left with at the very end, if this Strange Supreme does come into the MCU as Strange Supreme and going against the one that we know in the main MCU timeline, is it just going to be those two or do we do get that antagonist come in in some way? That would be interesting. Another one that I have, well, the demons within the episode, something that Disney Plus slash Marvel has stayed away from due to other countries' feelings, you know, basically on the element that within these stories, because they don't like in China and uh, certain countries like that where you can't show spirits or ghosts or demons. Mm -hmm. And they don't like that. I'm surprised they actually did that. I'm wondering if they created an alternate version for those particular you know feeds when it comes to those uh those countries It'd be interesting if you guys know let us know and the last one i would have uh, i had a feeling of mephisto within this episode with the the way evil you know uh, strange supreme was transforming but you know I, i'm kind of eliminating that now as i think about it more and more you know, we've had those thoughts of like, oh, we're going to have Mephisto. We're going to have Mephisto. I'm not jumping on that bandwagon anymore. <laughs> yeah, this the whole Mephisto thing needs to just... It's kind of <laughs> done to death at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, goodness gracious. Um, all right, so we got some quotes? Yeah. I'll start off with one. Sure. And the Watcher states, one life, one choice, one moment can destroy the entire universe. Yeah. Um, my first one is, is uh, Obeying when he's, when he's dying, he says, even in our world, death is a part of the plan. 
And I, I love that because that was the whole theme of the episode was right. He's trying to reverse death. He was trying to stop Christine from dying. So. Yeah, and you can't really do that within that particular universe because you're changing all of time at that point within mm -hmm. that particular universe. And um, next one for me would be the Watcher saying, what if the best intentions created strange uh, consequences? Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I loved when Wong uh, approaches him about the tea. He says, I see we switched to the cheap stuff. So yeah. obviously Strange has been drinking a lot. <laughs> a lot of whiskey. Uh, yeah, I saw that too and I thought, yeah, Steve needed that one. <laughs> <laughs> you you changed this the cheap stuff, man. <laughs> Uh, next one up for me would be the ancient one saying you cannot reverse an absolute point. So that was very much emphatic. Mm -hmm. And then strange when he gets to the, the library, he and meets obeying for the first time. He says, Oh, wonderful. You're cryptic. Please tell me you're not called Cogliastro. <laughs> and the last one I would have would be the watcher saying, I am not a God. And neither are you. And that is to strange himself. Yeah, really, really good. My last one is that uh, nice cape, but I draw the line at bugs. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and he steals the cape. Yeah, have we ever seen that cape before? Or is that something new? Is that? It's kind of a different one, an offshoot from what he normally uses in the real. Oh MCU. yeah, no, it's definitely it's definitely a different than his than his actual uh, cape. So. Yeah. Oh. All right. So. Well, we had no feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to put anything in any news because a lot of people are pretty much speculating. So yeah. uh, a lot of it ha is based upon uh, it, are we going to see Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire in the next uh, No Way Home trailer? Yeah, there's been but a lot of speculation about that trailer. A lot of speculation, but nothing new. Uh, Shang-Chi has been released. And from what we heard from friends, it's amazing. I have yet to see it. I don't know if I'm able to see it soon, but I will eventually will, and we will do a review of it Absolutely. When, when it does come out on digital. So uh, keep that in mind. So right on to podcast recommendations. So Steve, what do you have? Um, so I've been listening to, and we, we got it. It was suggested from a friend of ours, actually from our, our podcast, uh, the Next Level Network uh, founder, Ben Beck. Uh, there's a, a podcast out there called Smartless. It's got Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and Sean Hayes on it and it's another one of these kind of interview uh shows or conversations where they each pick a different celebrity each week and they don't tell the other two who the celebrity is and they bring them in and they discuss and and talk about things so you can just pick an episode you don't have to listen to them in order or anything you can just pick an episode and if it's got a i listened to the ryan reynolds episode and the darius rucker episode that were really really good so oh cool darius Smart rucker list. really yeah darius they did darius rucker but one of them had some sort of connection uh to him and that told some really good stories things that i did not know about like why hootie and the blowfish broke up and uh, <laughs> that kind of i didn't i didn't realize that it was just basically the drummer decided he didn't want to do it anymore he was getting married or he had married somebody's ex-wife and he didn't want to be in the band anymore and they had they had decided at the beginning that if any one of them left, they would all just, they wouldn't like, they wouldn't bring somebody in to replace any band members that the band would just then go their separate ways. If any one decided to leave. So oh, that's, that's pretty what cool. they did. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I have two that would be Wilhelm on the next level podcast network with Ben Beck. And you could listen to the most recent episode with Mr. Steve Brown. Yes. <laughs> you guys discuss war movies and it's yes. pretty cool and uh next one up would for me would be run for your lives with daphne and Pake, and that can be found on the pod uh on <laughs> the pirate core and the K entertainment network and uh yeah you could hear them and they achieved the 50th episode and i just got to listen to that and i thought and i they reflect on the last what 25 episodes yeah that they, they do did? Every, every 25 they kind of do uh they do yeah, seasons. a retrospective yeah. of what they have done and what their favorite podcasts were about and their favorite movies that they covered so check that out and that can be found on the pirate core entertainment network so check out run for your lives nice and youtube recommendations for me well obviously the grim life collective michael and jessica are continually doing their graveyard romps and they're going to gra grave sites of celebrities so check them out on 
the Grim Life Collective on YouTube, as well as that would be Sean Clark, and he does Hollywood Hallowed Grounds, as well as Horrors Hallowed Grounds. So check that out, and you could find that on Malfunction. That's Mal, M A L, Funk, and that's F U N C S E A N. And you can find that on YouTube. So check him out. He uh, has been doing a lot of uh, movie sites. And, you know, I love Sean, but he's very investigative and gets all the really cool stuff. So check them out. Very cool. All right. So we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, all of your normal Apple podcasts, all of your podcasts, whatever podcast player of choice you have. Just search for us, Panels to Pixels podcast. We're out there, and we would love for you to subscribe to us, um, uh, to us on those those whatever. I don't know why I can't say this this week. Uh, yeah, pod, just just find us. We're out there. Just find us. We're on pretty much every <laughs> podcast podcast player of choice. I found us on Stitcher, so we're officially on Stitcher. Nice. So I've been listening to us back on that. You can find us on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, yeah. Spotify, Amazon Music, a whole bunch of them. Yeah. You know, we Ben's did, we, been working really hard on that stuff, and yeah, he, I we have to thank him for that because yes. he's putting us out there, and uh, we're grateful to be on the Next Level Podcast Network as well. Absolutely, absolutely. We also have a Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Uh, we have an email address, which you can always record a voicemail or send us an email at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one, the T O spelled out right in the middle, and the number one at gmail.com we also have a youtube channel which is panels to pixels podcast so go out there subscribe to us and give us a thumbs up oh yeah and next week well the next episode of what if well we don't know what if it is i saw i don't want to give anything away i did i did find a a trailer for it i guess that they put out uh it looks like it's gonna be bonkers it looks like it's gonna be good oh cool so i can't wait to (laughs) <laughs> to yeah. do that <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to spoil anything by saying what i saw in this trailer so it's... all right cool well where where can listeners hear us other than here well i could be heard on adrenaline cinema podcast on the pirate car entertainment network and we cover action films adventure films and suspense films so basically anything that gets your adrenaline going uh next up will probably be atomic blonde so I'm going to be editing that. You'll probably hear that within the next week or so. I'm trying to separate them because of my transition. So I just want to let you listeners know right now I'm in the midst of moving out of a house, moving into some friend's house to live for a while and then move into a place more permanently. So it's going to take some time. So Steve might have some future guests right now. I think I have a couple of weeks, so at least, you know, you'll have me for a couple of weeks, and then maybe there'll be a couple of weeks where Steve has a guest come on, yeah, and then he'll be taking the reins, so keep that in mind, I, uh, I'm doing well, I'm working, I'm still doing what I have to do, but we just want to give you the content that you deserve and listen to us weekly, as we should, so uh, Steve will be taking up the helm after uh, I have to vacate, as yeah. it were. <laughs> just be a short be a short time you'll, you'll be a short time with me. i can be heard i i send voicemails to various podcasts that our friends do so you'll hear my voice on different podcasts strange indeed run for your lives all those those kind of podcasts that are out there house podcastica tv podcast industry is on all those out there i send voicemails to them when i can and uh, of course mark already mentioned that the episode i did with uh, with ben on wilhelm is up and you can hear that on more movies and what do you mean, deal with you? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to do fine. You'll be fine. Oh, you okay. don't need me. Uh, basically, you know, it'll be fun. And yeah. you guys will have other voices other than me and me stuttering. <laughs> so it'll be fun. Uh, you'll, you'll guys have a different perspective and our friends being on. And it'll be great. So enjoy and like i stated before we're looking to give you the content you deserve so i just want to thank everyone for listening i am mark and i'm steve and this was panels to pixels and we'll see you on the next panel good night everybody good night.